It is time for the first full slate of the NBA season. We had a slate last night on Tuesday. It was only two games and tonight on Wednesday. Full slate, 12 teams in action, lots of options to choose from, and about to give you all the guys that I like at first glance on the slate for both FanDuel and DraftKings. So do me a favor, like, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff. Really do appreciate it. And if you want to sign up for the new tools that we have at stochastic.com, now is the time to sign up. Really helped me out last night on the first slate of the year. I ended up coming in first place, uh, split with a few people over on Fandle, but still profit nearly $10,000 for the slate, which I'm never going to complain about. And if you guys want access to all of the tools that I used last night and that I'm also about to display in this video, sign up using the link below. Promo code tip off is going to get you 20% off when you sign up for our NBA packages over at stochastic.com. And this is an offer that's only going to be good for the first week of the season. So now is the time to take advantage and get your foot in the door. Let's go ahead and look at the slate. So I've already built out lineups here for DK and FanDuel. Just going to run them through the Sims tool here while we're on the show. So the DraftKings ones I actually have run through, and then after we do an overview of everything on DK, we'll do the same for FanDuel. Now, one thing that does really stand out about the slate on DraftKings is that there are a bunch of players that are uh, very mispriced on DraftKings. Just some terrible pricing done by the DK algorithm. Here is the highest projected lineup that I have at the uh, first sim that I've run for DK. It is Tyus Jones, Desmond Bain, Taylor Horton Tucker, Obi Toppin, who is inexplicably min-priced on DraftKings, Nick Claxton, Luka Doncic, Evan Mobley, Nikola Vucevic. So as far as Luka goes, like points per dollar is not my favorite play on the slate, but there is so much value that... It's not all that hard to get up to him. So he is my favorite payup option just based on that nature, though. It's easy to pay up for him, and I'm not going to leave salary on the table. So I'm going to end up with a decent of Luca just because of that. But let's go ahead and look at the individual lineups now. And, oh, sorry, I already looked at the individual lineups. Let's go ahead and look at the individual player exposures going position by position like I did yesterday. I thought that was pretty helpful. Uh, it's a good way also for me to kind of get a sense for what it is that I'm looking at on this slate. But starting with point guard, Point guards I'm getting the most to here. Tyus Jones and Luka Doncic mentioned Luka at the top. He's not all that popular today, 14.5% owned by the field, and I'm getting to a good amount of him for all the reasons I just mentioned. It's not all that hard to pay up for him. And Tyus Jones, who's sub 5K for Washington over on DraftKings, is about appropriately priced on FanDuel of $5,700, but too cheap over on DK, also getting north of 20% of Tyler Hero and Drew Holiday on DK. Let's go ahead and look at shooting guards now. Shooting guards that I'm getting the most of. It is a THT, Taylor Horton Tucker, who is also mispriced on DK. We've got Desmond Bain, who's going to be uber popular today. Same with Zach Levine. So here's what's going on with Desmond Bain. There is no John Morant to open the year, and it seems like DraftKings just priced Jaron Jackson Jr. and Desmond Bain as if Morant was going to be playing. So Desmond Bain stands out a good amount on DK. Zach Levine, another player, mispriced, sub-7K for absolutely no reason whatsoever. DraftKings is just like, hey, this guy will make him $1,500 too cheap. Play Zach Levine today. One player near I'm getting a good amount of that I am probably going to be lower on once the slate starts is Jalen Green. I'm not crazy interested in him but the Sims are giving me a good amount of exposure to him, at least for now. And then Drew Holiday, only $6,100 over on DraftKings, another player who's mispriced to open up the season. Small forward, the core plays over there. Uh, some of the same familiar faces, THT, Desmond Bain, Zach Levine, those are three guys that also had shooting guard eligibility that also stand out as small forwards. The power forward spot. The best players to get to over at power forward, Obi Toppin, Evan Mobley, and Jaron Jackson Jr. Although I'm coming in a little bit underweight to the field right here on Triple J, but just because he's in, you know, 50% of the field's lineups, I think he's one of the best plays overall at the forward or center spot on DK. $6,600 with no John Morant. Evan Mobley, he's benefiting from the absence of Jared Allen. A lot more rebound opportunities are going to be going to him. And the Cavs just don't have that much depth in the front court. So I also think we're looking at big minutes for Evan Mobley in addition to all the rebounding opportunities. And I think they probably will play smaller lineups for a lot of the night. And then Obi Toppin, he's going to be starting for the Pacers to start the year, coming to Indiana from the Knicks and Flatman price, 3K on DraftKings. It's a missed price. So getting to him in 64% of my top 150 lineups. Center, 
top centers, and basically every center is mispriced over on DraftKings. You've just got a ton of guys in like the 4500 to 6K range that are all like 1500 to $2,000 too cheap. So this is a loaded position. And uh, top into center eligibility, so does Mobley. Vooch looks good at center. Shangun, Miles Turner, Nick Claxton, Jar- uh, Jalen Duran. There's a ton of good center options for today. It's kind of hard to screw up the position. Just a lot of these guys that are too cheap, like I mentioned, and I think it's worth mixing and matching and playing a lot of these centers in like that 4,500 to 6K range going from like Duran up to Vooch. And I think all of them are different guys to rotate into your lineups. We go ahead and look at all of the players overall and see who it is that we are getting uh, underweight to here. And yeah, a little bit underweight to Jaron Jackson Jr., but really just because of how popular it is, not getting too much of Russell Westbrook, Walker Kessler as of right now, but nothing else that looks all that crazy in here. So let's go ahead and check out FanDuel now. And uh, FanDuel's contest, have it set to 20%. Actually, no, FanDuel is 25% to first today. So set that to 25% to first. Get the lineup file, run the sim here, and see what we end up getting to for FanDuel. Kind of interesting. FanDuel really decreased the size of their prize pool for today. And last night we had the, I know it was the first slate of the year, but still FanDuel for opening night did a $1 million prize pool with 200000 to first place. And then, you know, even though I came in first, I didn't win that much money. It was split with a lot of people. But for today, it is a $400,000 prize pool with 100000 in first place, which is why I put the settings on that for 25% to first. And then DraftKings isn't quite as top-heavy today. It is a $600,000 prize pool with 100000 to first. So if you guys are building lineups and then running them through the Sims tool, I would set it either to like 20% to first or 10% to first is the payout. I set it to 20%. Uh, But if there is a situation where maybe there's overlay on DraftKings, I would put it a little bit flatter of a payout. Uh, But I think 20% is the most reasonable way to approach that tournament in terms of the settings to put on for the Sims tool for the main slate over on DK. So I'm interested to see what ends up looking different on FanDuel compared to DraftKings because some of the players we're getting to a lot of on DraftKings, Obi Toppin, he's not min-price on Dra- on FanDuel like he is on DraftKings. Zach Levine, he's too cheap on FanDuel, but not in the same way that he was over on DK. But let's see here. Favorite the top 150 lineups. The number one overall projected lineup that we have right here is Fred Van Vliet. Tyus Jones, Desmond Bain, Jordan Poole, Taylor Horton Tucker, Zaire Williams, Zach Collins, Zion Williamson, and Jakob Pertl. Uh, One thing that stands out about these players here, Jordan Poole is somebody who I like a good amount on FanDuel, so I'm interested to see how much the Sims get me to him because there was all the opportunity for shot attempts in the world for Jordan Poole to open up the year. This Wizards team has Jordan Poole. It is Kyle Kuzma, who are both high usage guys, and then nobody else who really is capable of creating their own shots on the offense. So I think Jordan Poole is going to score a ton of points per game this year. Let's see what we're getting to here in the Sims, going position by position. We will start with the point guards. And at point guard here, getting to uh, Tyus Jones, Spencer Dinwiddie, Fred Van Fleet, Markel Fultz. Those are all players who are north of 20% of lineups as the most rostered point guards. Shooting guards to be getting to on FanDuel. Uh, THT, lots of exposure to him, lots of exposure to Desmond Bain, about even with the field though. So getting to 33.3% of Bain, but he is projected for 31.1% ownership. So field is there about appropriately. And then also getting to uh, Donovan Mitchell, Karis LeVert, and Tyler Hero. So Hero to open up the year, he's not projected for all that much ownership. And I do think he's one of the better points per dollar plays in both DraftKings and FanDuel. We're getting to him north of 20% on both sites. And when it comes to Tyler Hero, the Heat are really thin in the backcourt because they lost guys like Gabe Vincent to the Lakers in free agency, and they didn't bring anybody back. They lost Max Struess as well in free agency to the Cavs. So this is a thin team, and they were also really conservative with the playing time of Jimmy Butler to open up last season. If they do that again this year, it's just going to have to be Tyler Hero on the court a lot, and we know he's a high-usage guy when he's out there. So I do like getting to Tyler Hero at least as of now projected to be a uh, somewhat contrarian play, around 10% on DraftKings and FanDuel. At small forward, THT, Desmond Bain, Karis LeVert, Tyler Hero. Some Robert Covington in here. We'll see what the Clippers ultimately end up doing with their starting lineup. I'm not sure which way they are going to go because Terrence Mann is out for today. So maybe it's Covington, maybe it isn't. It's a potential late swap situation, but at least as of right now, Covington, 
Only 3% owned by the field, so he's a viable contrarian option, assuming that he ends up drawing the start. Power forward. Power forwards I'm getting to the most of here, Evan Mobley, Zach Collins, Jaron Jackson Jr. So even at an elevated price point on FanDuel, still Jaron Jackson Jr. making it into lineup. So the same situation, a little bit underweight to the field because he is expected to be the second most popular power forward on FanDuel, only behind Evan Mobley. And then if we go and check out the center position, which on FanDuel isn't quite as mispriced as what it is on DraftKings, a little bit more spread out here. Evan Mobley, of a lot of that's because he was power forward and center eligibility. Of the players that are center only, Clint Capella, Jakob Pertl, Vooch are the ones we have double-digit exposure to, but fairly spread out on FanDuel, especially relative to DK, where you could play multiple centers. If we look at the players that overall we are underweight to, underweight to Denny Avdia, underweight to Jaron Jackson Jr., although still one of the most exposed players that we're getting to on FanDuel, also underweight to Dennis Schroeder, who's projected for double-digit ownership. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you found this a helpful way to break down the initial slate. And uh, I'm hoping that I could be as successful tonight as I was last night because it's always cool when new tools come out and the first time I try them end up winning a GPP. So if you guys want access to our basketball package, which includes everything I showed here on screen, sign up using the link below, promo code tip off, 20% off. And now is the only time you guys could take advantage of that offer because it is going to be going away next week. So thanks for watching. If you guys want more NBA content from me, I will be on live before lock tonight with Eric Lindquist. So I hope to see you guys there.